Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about application protocols used in IoT. Here is the learning outcome. By the end of this session, students will be able to relate a given uh, protocol with a specific IoT application. Here is the outline. First, we will be discussing about why uh, we need protocols and what are exactly IoT protocols and then we'll be going through uh, where these IoT application protocols exactly uh, lie in the IoT protocol stack and then we'll be uh, getting through an example and then we'll be going through an example where uh, we will discuss how MQTT works with respect to a simple temperature based IoT application. So before proceeding ahead, I would like students to pause the video for a while and uh, think on where exactly the IoT protocols lie and why do exactly we need IoT application protocols. So if you could refer the previous video and the IoT protocol stack, you can easily be able to identify this. So as we talk about an IoT application protocols, uh, the things will be more clear and the answer exactly lies. Uh, uh, for the question, why do we need IoT protocols, the answer to this lies in overcoming a challenge uh, that we usually come across whenever we are building an IoT project or application. So the basic challenges here are device-to-device uh, -device communication on a local network, on device-to-device -device communication over internet, or device-to-server communication, which is situated somewhere in the cloud, and server-to-server -server, server communication. Uh, over internet for storing the sensed data. And this challenge is generally resolved by protocols like MQTT and COAP which stands for message queuing telemetry transport and constrained application protocols uh, founded on TCP and UDP. Where do these protocols exactly stand in the protocol stack? This is a very important topic to understand. So as you can see, uh, you can think on this for a while again by pausing the video and uh, the answer is very much clear as soon as you uh, get this uh, protocol stack in front of you. So as you can see, we have application protocols and uh, we are most often interested in today's session about these two protocols, that is COAP and MQTT. So these are generally built on uh, UDP and TCP. So as you can see, MQTT is built upon TCP, which is a connection-oriented protocol, whereas UDP is a, a datagram-based data or a connection-less uh, protocol. And hence, COAP will be a connection-less protocol as well, whenever we are utilizing them in our application. So what is more uh, important in this overall TCP IP stack is we are interested in the application protocol. So we are interested in the application layer protocols uh, which are COAP and MQTT. So exactly how these applications come into picture and how they act in a given IoT application can be uh, easily be understood by uh, watching, by looking into a couple of examples of IoT. So what are standard protocols in IoT? So the standard protocols in IoT are basically two, uh, which are MQTT and COAP. These are open standards and they are better suited for constrained environments. Like maybe uh, imagine like we have a small microcontroller whose RAM is very less and we can't bear any sort of resources. Uh, where we need a very high RAM like processing, computing and all the things. Because more often in an IoT application we have, uh, because more often in IoT based applications we have sensors which are directly connected to either a small microcontrollers or we often have sensors which can be programmed directly. Uh, having said that we have small sensors or microcontrollers, it, it, it's a it's a proven thing that uh, wherever you have microcontrollers, they often have very less amount of RAM available for processing. And that is the reason why most of the sensors actually sense the data and they uh, do a, a small scale processing like maybe sampling or some sort of frequent analysis. And then that is directly pumped onto the gateway and then the data is uh, pushed directly to the servers where uh, the analytical modeling or prediction and other types of things are handled by the server. So the entire CPU intensive jobs are 
based on the servers or the clouds so having said that again we need to remember always that most of the iot applications where sensors are involved the only job of sensor is to sense the data and by using some hardware protocol directly transfer them to the controllers uh, internal memory space or maybe the internal ram and we can't rely on these microcontroller rams for cpu intensive jobs so that's the reason why these kind of protocols like mqrt and cui becomes handy so that we can directly transfer the given data or the sensed data to the servers they also provide a mechanism for asynchronous communication as well as uh, they can run on ip uh, we will discuss this in detail so as an outcome so as a takeaway of this uh, uh, small discussion so as a takeaway of this small discussion we can uh, conclude like uh, we can conclude the things like mqrt gives flexibility in communication patterns and acts purely as a pipe for binary data whereas coap is designed for interoperability with web uh, it is similar to http uh, now let us discuss a little bit uh, more about an mqrt protocol so what is mqrt mqrt is basically a publish subscribe based messaging protocol that is used for uh, transferring data by means of a lightweight or m to m communication so let us imagine about a condition where uh, we have a central broker generally if we are aware of things like server and client where uh, a client tries to access the server's data and that's how we generally refer the server as a web server so imagine a small condition so now let us go through a small example of uh, how so now let us uh, simply go through an uh, example of how an mqrt works in a given iot application so as we are already aware uh, that this is a uh, publish subscribe based messaging protocol so definitely we need to have some server and a client so imagine we have a central server which we refer as broker in uh, terms of iot language especially uh, whenever we are dealing with mqrt protocol we need to uh, call the central gateway or the server as a broker next imagine we have three clients called client a client b and client c as shown on the screen and client a for example uh, is having some temperature sensors connected uh, throughout its own uh, organization or an application so imagine that client a has a couple of temperature sensors connected through a microcontroller and it wants the sensed temperature data to be pumped directly to uh, an internet gateway and it wants to broadcast the given temperature to maybe some other clients like client b and client c so with this scenario uh, imagine that you have uh, client a which is trying to sense the temperature and as shown on the screen it is uh, trying to simply sense the data and directly uh, publish that particular data to the broker so as you can see here so as you can see here uh, the sensed temperature is actually sent so as you can see the sensor temperature is actually sent so as you can see the sensor temperature is actually sent to the broker so this particular process of a given client transferring a given data towards the broker is known as publishing the data in terms of the iot and mqrt perspective next broker is going to get all this data and it is going to transfer the data further to these two clients called client b and client c so the process of broker transferring the data being published by another client in the given network to other clients is known as publishing the data from broker towards the clients so this is how we exactly uh, talk about whenever we are talking about some other uh, sensitivities so imagine that we have client a client b and client c uh, now for instance if client a has temperature sensor connected to it and it wants to publish the data 
that it has sent it to the remaining two clients called client B and client C. So in this case, we are going to allow client A to publish the data. So client A has currently published the data to the broker. And now the broker is having all the sorts of data that client A has, ha uh, A has actually sensed in terms of the temperature. And now the job of broker is to publish the data further to client B and client C. And this is how it is done. So do note the arrow directions here. So this is how client A has actually uh, transferred the data to the broker and broker is now responsible for transferring the data to client C as well as client B. Now in this scenario, uh, uh, there are two important things to be noted. That is whenever that is whenever a particular client wants to talk with another client, like for example, client A wants to talk with client C and client A wants to talk with client B, it is not directly possible. The things need to happen only through the broker. So this is how uh, the things generally happen in terms of the impurity. So, so with this given example, it can be very easily be identified that uh, wherever you have, so wherever you have a client server based of a logic, similar to the example on the screen, we need to definitely have the broker working efficiently in between. Now, another advantage of using impurity is that uh, only those clients which have actually subscribed to a given specific topic will be getting the data. So this is a new case where we are having four clients, client A, B, C, and D, as you can see on the screen. So here, client D is a non-subscriber. So do note that client D is a non-subscriber. So whenever we say it's a non-subscriber, what do we exactly mean? So we mean that uh, the data that client A has sensed and it is trying to publish will only be transferred to the clients which are subscribers, which I have underlined that is clients and client B. Whereas client D is a non-subscriber and that's the reason why there is no data transmission from the broker of the temperature towards client D. So this is how MQDT generally works. So the important points that you need to note whenever you're talking about MQDT is we need to identify the topic and then we need to identify the message which needs to be transferred and then we need to identify the subscribers without which it will be very difficult to identify whether the sensed data will be broadcasted or whether is there anyone uh, available to listen or not. So the things will be more clear further if we implement these things clearly in our upcoming videos. Further, we have a constraint application protocol, uh, which is very much similar to uh, the functionality of a UDP and most oftenly this is a document transfer protocol. The reason why this is known as a document transfer protocol is again, uh, uh, this follows the server client model and the packet size is very much uh, very tiny and the packet size involved in COAP is very tiny and that's the reason why most of the IoT based applications wherever we want a one to one communication between server and client. Uh, which involve very tiny microcontrollers which less amount of RAM are utilized. So CIP comes handy uh, whenever you have less resources in terms of RAM and uh, you want a direct one-to-one -one communication which is also connectionless. Here are the references used for the video. Thank you.